Hi everybody, I'm Stefano Moro and uh, in this video I will provide you an overview on uh, large-scale multiple input, multiple output systems. But first of all, why do we need large-scale MIMO? In the last year, as we can see in this graph, we are experiencing an, a constant increase uh, in the multimedia traffic that travel on the mobile radio network. All this traffic has to be transported on the radio spectrum. For this reason, we have a crowded spectrum because uh, all the low frequencies have been already used for various communication protocols. So for new era communication protocols like 5G, we will have to shift to higher frequencies like the millimeter waves in the 30 to 300 gigahertz band, we have a free spectrum available for our communication. These waves also allow allows us to, to use smaller antennas and it is very, very useful when we have to develop a big array of many antenna elements. But what is the main challenge of large-scale MIMO? Mainly we have to focus on the multi user detection, where many different users uh, transmit their signals in the same space, in the same radio space. So at the receiver side, we have to make the right de decision between all the received signals. And this is difficult because we have co-channel interference. Co-channel interference, it is uh, caused by the nature of uh, this transmission because uh, all these all these signals are not orthogonal to each other and so we have uh, overlapping in uh, in uh, one of the domains we use of course the frequency space uh, and time then we also have problems due to the fact that we use uh, real apparata that has not an infinite impulse response how can we model the mimo channel as we can see in this uh, picture, we have S as input, then it has to cross the uh, H matrix, and then we have uh, a noise, an additive noise, and at the output uh, we can have uh, Y. The detector have the um, objective uh, to, to make the right decision on which uh, output refer to the, to the right input. The main challenge for engineers is to develop a computational efficient algorithm that can reach or goes very near to optimality. Because we know that uh, maximum likelihood and maximum a priori algorithms uh, can uh, achieve optimal solution, but not with uh, computational efficiency, uh, especially for real-time applications. The H matrix, it is a fundamental component of all the mathematical model. It can be estimated in different way. We call the non-coherent detection when we do not estimate directly the channel matrix, but we use statistical data to uh, evaluate. And then we have the coherent detection when we estimate directly the channel with some techniques. You may think that MIMO technology is a new idea, but it is not. We can, uh, we can divide the, um, into four phases from uh, the 60s to nowadays. And um, we had uh, the first phase with a single user TDMA and FDMA uh, communication. Then we have second phase uh, with the CDMA based multi-user detection. Then we have um, joint symbol detection in medium size uh, MIMO systems. And uh, lastly, from the middle 2000s, we have the large scale MIMO. So let's have a look on all the different type of detectors. First of all, we have the optimum detectors like uh, maximum likelihood and maximum a priori. This detector uses uh, this particular formula where uh, we want to know the probability of a specific input given a specific output. But the main problem of these algorithms, it is their complexity because at the increase of the number of users, we have an exponential increase on the complexity that goes like two to the power of K, where K is the number of users. So let's see which are the feasible algorithms that can be used in real life. First of all, we have the linear 
decoders. In general, the formula that represents this linear decoder is a linear transformation where we have the decoded signal that is a transformation of the output vector. The first linear decoder is of course the match filter. It is uh, the best solution for complexity, but it is not the best for performance because uh, it has been designed not uh, considering the multi-user interference. Then we have the zero forcing based decoder where we try to compute the inverse of the H matrix. But we have, some, we have some problems with this detector in case where the signals is very weak. In this case, we, we will increase the noise. Then we will, we will have uh, the MMSE detector that stands for minimizing mean square error. The idea is to minimize the difference between the input and the output. And uh, it is uh, quite good also with low SNR. Then we have a, a new family of uh, estimator, the so-called uh, interference cancellation based detectors, where the main characteristics is uh, that they are non-linear, so in general they achieve better performance than the linear one, but uh, at the cost of uh, and higher complexity. They suffer from error propagation, but they are quite good in the situations where we have a high power interfering users in the system. Let's have a look on the different detector in this family. We have the successive interference cancellation detector where each symbol is analyzed one by one and it is very good in the near far situation where we have some users far away that have weaker signal compared to nearer uh, users that have higher uh, signals power at the receiver side. But this is at the cost of high complexity due to the fact that we have to reorder the uh, signals to analyze one by one. Then we have the parallel interference cancellation detector where all the signals are analyzed in parallel, of course, and uh, it is uh, very good for a situations where all the users have quite the same power. And multi-stage interference cancellation detector where each signal has to cross many stages of decoding before it is really decoded. And lastly, for the interference cancellation family, we have the decision feedback decoder. It is a special case of the successive interference cancellation where we have a feedback and the feed forward like in this image. Another big family is uh, the um, tree based uh, detector and uh, these detectors are very good because they can reach uh, near optimality performance uh, at lower complexity compared to uh, maximum likelihood. Their fast growing uh, interest uh, is mainly due to the fact that they are based to the SD algorithm. SD algorithm stands for sphere detector because uh, as we can see in this uh, image, uh, the SD algorithm uh, exploit the idea of uh, comparing only the neighborhood uh, around a determined sphere in the n dimensions. But this kind of uh, Algorithms are not good for situations where we have low SNR or high number of inputs because SD algorithms tend to increase exponentially for low SNR situations. Then we have the family of lattice reductions decoder. These decoders are based on the algebraic and geometrical idea of a lattice. To compute the decoding, it, they, has, they have to pre-compute the matrix in order to speed up the process of finding the distances of every symbol in the lattice. Another family of detectors are the PDA or probabilistic data association detector. They were invented for radar applications specifically for plot to track association problem. They are also used for computer vision problems. They are very good also for communications network because uh, the idea behind this decoder is uh, to uh, compute uh, the probability of uh, 
the different candidates give uh, this probability as input to the decoder and then by iterative uh, approx, uh, like we can see in this uh, graph, will uh, output uh, the result. And all this process uh, is based uh, on Gaussian approximation. Lastly, we have the semi-definite programming relaxation decoder. This is based uh, on the uh, convex optimization minimization problem, very known by mathematicians. They are very good because they can solve in polynomial time, at worst case, uh, the problem. They have to be developed uh, for each modulation and uh, they are quite good but uh, not uh, suitable for high level modulation like uh, 64 QM, uh, 128 and so on. But all these decoders uh, have some problems uh, in uh, the rank deficient scenario or the overloaded scenario. And um, this situation can happen if the antenna elements are too close to each other or if we have the so-called keyhole effect. The keyhole effect is when we have a big obstacle with a small hole behind the receiver so that all the uh, radio waves have to cross the, this uh, hole and by this they will uh, collide with each other and will uh, overlap. So at the receiver side it is very difficult to demodulate. In fact, all the decoders that uh, are based on uh, inverting the H matrix is not suitable for this situation. In general, uh, the best way to choose uh, a, a decoder is uh, to understand the application scenario and uh, the uh, goodness uh, criteria of each application. In particular, for our interest, uh, it is uh, the large scale scenario. In this situation, we always have benefits from uh, increase the number of uh, antennas, because uh, at uh, the number of uh, antennas increase, we have a reduction on the probability of outage. And then more antennas means uh, more uh, flexibility in the space domain and so we can transmit more data with the same bandwidth. We can divide uh, in two situations. Uh, the first is when we have uh, a single cell or many cells but they do not cooperate. In this situation we can see a point-to-point -point communication where we have many antennas uh, both on receiver and on transmitter side because we have uh, good channel quality, we can uh, use a low complexity algorithm, but specifically it is not uh, very suitable for this scenario, uh, the tree-based and the SD algorithms because uh, of many inputs, but uh, uh, works very well uh, all the PDA and SDPR, are SDPR uh, algorithms. In the other case, uh, with uh, uh, many distributed antennas, like uh, in the situation with a single uh, base station and many mobile stations, we will have that at the receiver side uh, there are much more antennas uh, respect to the transmit transmitting side. Due to the presence of many antennas, it is uh, easier to decode uh, and to detect uh, the right user, and uh, in general, uh, we can counteract the fast fading effect. In the cooperative scenario, instead, we can connect many base stations with fiber cables to create a big centralized model architecture. In this situation, all the decoding can be performed in a cooperative way, so better performance can be achieved. But we have to remember that we will have an increase on the backhaul traffic. Real result of the large scale MIMO can be seen. For example, we have the OpFound neural network used with likelihood Ashan search that can allow communication between 600 antennas both at the receiver side and at the transmitter side. Also, in the LTE Advance, we have reached 3.8 gigabit with 128 antenna elements at the receiver side uh, supporting up to 8 users. But nowadays uh, with uh, the new 5G technology we can achieve up to 20 gigabits uh, or more uh, of peak rate using uh, more than 256 uh, uh, antenna elements. 
Other interesting applications of the MIMO technology are the so-called cognitive radio and in particular the uh, software-defined radio, where using smart uh, algorithms we can uh, adapt uh, to the environment. MIMO is also important for uh, other strange applications like uh, MIMO radar where uh, multiple antennas uh, can be used to detect uh, planes or also for multi-mode fiber uh, modulation with uh, MIMO technology at the receiver side. So, I hope I haven't been boring you so much and uh, all the information of this video can be found in the research paper of 2015 from uh, Yang and Hanzo named 50 years of uh, MIMO detection the road to large-scale MIMO. So, thank you for watching!